and accountable government focused on creating and maintaining a vibrant and growing community which will attract and retain residences, businesses, students, and visitors. Can we all work together to assure that our residents, businesses, students, and visitors in the city of Flint receive the full range of municipal services provided in a responsible and financially sound manner, consistent with the best practices of any high performing organization? Can we all work together to assure the orderly, consistent, and sustainable implementation of the city's newly adopted master plan, which defines the current and future blueprint for, the, for a better quality of life for all, while at the same time charting a course for active and constructive civic engagement and participation? And finally, can you all work together towards that common goal, which is in the best interest of the city of Flint, to foster a deliberative atmosphere of civility and respect for one another, even though we represent differing areas of the city, with perhaps different needs for the immediate foreseeable future, and recognizing that we all have different opinions about the hows and whys of getting things done, even in the face of a legal mandate. Now, I pose those questions to you this afternoon because then, and only then, will the financial emergency truly be over. Then, and only then, can the residents, businesses, and civic leaders here ever have any hope or expectation that the city of Flint won't incur a severely detrimental third strike by having it declared once again for the third time that because of the facts, not opinions, because of the facts, not politics, because of the facts and not emotions, that the city of Flint cannot manage its own municipal affairs. Then and only then will the specter of more drastic measures as provided by state law to eliminate municipal debt, such as bankruptcy court or total asset liquidations, then and only then will they be eliminated from the discussions of Flint's financial health and well-being. Then and only then, in the final analysis, no matter how bad you all may not want it, or how bad I may want to leave, I, recommend, I cannot recommend to the state until those things are met. I can only recommend to the state that the city of Flint is ready to transition back into a situation of home real, rule order when the answer to those questions is yes. That I submit to you for your consideration is what the state law that you just swore to abide by says. Contrary to political rhetoric, it is not what emergency managers think or feel, nor is it any individual's opinion of what they think or believe should happen. You each have been provided a copy of that law, along with additional administrative requirements pursuant to the law and necessary to the fulfillment of your roles as members of the City Council. I would ask that you familiarize yourselves with its provisions, as it is the governor's policy that determines the operations, managerial processes, and legal procedures of the City of Flint for now. Any questions you may have regarding the content or implementation of the law should be addressed to the city attorney. He is the chief legal officer of the city and the chief legal officer for the city council. Over the next few weeks, I look forward to a dialogue with each of you so that you are factually aware of the challenges we face. Since my arrival here October 8th, I have been having those same conversations with the mayor city council leadership, and those members of the city council that have requested such a meeting. I look forward to this continued participation and hopefully we will collectively seek to identify solutions to the common and particular problems both long and short term. I also encourage your communication and deliberations, ongoing discussions with the mayor on matters of importance to the city of Flint. As you know, he is the only elected official elected at large and thus carries the interests and concerns of every ward, every district as defined by the state and federal governments, and every citizen in his efforts to fulfill his role as the city's chief elected official. 
I anticipate that there will be orientation sessions for you to attend on understanding the gravity of your responsibilities and growing professionally into your roles as elected officials. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a critical part of any eventual transition equation as provided by law, and I believe it is in uh, the best value to you as well as to the constituents you serve. Throughout my career, I have attended untold numbers of orientations, seminars, workshops, uh, other gatherings on city management and related matters to continuously educate myself on best practices, current issues, and strategic planning for moving distressed communities from the lesser side of the balance toward the greater. Part of my professional cre credentialing as a city manager through the International City and County Management Association, where I served six years as a member of the executive board and as its president from 2009 to 2010, requires continuing education for professional growth and development. Now, I share this with you simply because I ascribe to a philosophy of leadership by example, not one that simply says, do as I say, not as I do. Going forward, as has been repeatedly said, and I'm sure you know, we have some difficult challenges ahead to get to that point of discussing possible transition. These are not normal times in the city of Flint. For the second time, the city of Flint finds itself struggling to remain solvent. But if you review my track record over the past 35 years as a city manager, public administrator, which was provided to you the last time I addressed the council, might I point out also three and a half of those years were spent right here in Flint City Hall. You will note in that review that I have seized the challenges, not avoided them. And with the help of some very effective teams down through the years, have been successful in turning these challenges into opportunities. Opportunities fulfilled that I will argue have left the cities, counties, and township where I've managed in better financial and organizational condition than they were when I came to them. And I'm very hopeful of that same outcome once again here today in Flint. Now having said that, I'm sure you know it didn't come easy as you're about to, to find out in your new journey as elected officials. Many times, it required the patience of Job, the wisdom of Solomon, and the strength of Samson, both mentally as well as physically. And with that faith, which has kept me during all of my assignments of government leadership, we're going to get it right this time. And in closing, and I'm going to go off my script here a little bit, Pastor Fuller, it's always good just to petition everyone to say a prayer for the city. Say a prayer for your colleagues. Say a prayer for your neighbors. Say a prayer for your institutions. And yes, say a prayer for the emergency manager. <laughs> Because there are some situations that we, we face here in Flint, Detroit, Highland Park, Benton Harbor, Pontiac, and urban core cities around the nation that a mayor, a city council, a police chief, or a city manager, emergency or otherwise, simply can't fix. There are some systemic conditions that the legislature or the governor can't fix in a conference committee, Representative Stanley. There are some circumstances that can't be changed by a vote of the Congress, nor a signature into law by the President. But we draw comfort in knowing that fact by the confirmation of those of us who tend to seek a higher intervention and have overcome some monumental challenges, both professionally and personally, as a result, we draw further comfort in the confirmation of that fact by knowing that no matter the problems, a team approach to a solution is always better than a lone act. And with this confidence 
and a huge measure of that faith, we can set about the task of making a difference. And it will take that difference that we make to solidify the foundations from which the city of Flint can thrive for many years to come. That is my hope. That is my prayer. And I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Early. Uh, the mayor, comments? Well, good afternoon, everyone. And to our new city council members, uh, congratulations on your election. I'm here because of you. I wanted to be here uh, as you start this journey here at the city of Flint. You know, for some of you, this is a, a first chance to serve. For some others, it's a, it's a second chance to do some things that you wanted to do in your life. For others, you've been working at this for many, many years. And you've all had to beat a lot of the odds to get to where you are today. Through, through all the remarks that we've heard, and I'll be brief, we all know that this city faces extraordinary challenges. And there's certainly enough blame to go around. But our faith teaches us that there's a possibility available for redemption. Amen for forgiveness. Amen. And we can all make a choice. Amen. We've been granted the great blessing of freedom. Amen. And we recognized our veterans earlier for fighting all around this world and within our own borders to provide that opportunity to each and one of us as American citizens. Amen. So so the real question city council for those 10 elected officials of us who find ourselves in this particular time is whether we're going to fall victim to what we all know a lot of people in this community think is going to happen next. Right? right? right. We've already seen some of that on the front page of our newspaper. That's right. There, there's a lot of people in this community who already think Right. that this isn't going to work. Right. They already think Flint's going to continue to be a violent community. That's they right. already believe that we're going to continue to suffer with poverty and That's unemployment. Right. That's right. That uh, you and I aren't going to be able to get along. That's right. That none of us are going to be able to get along with the emergency manager. Yeah. And you know, I guess we can do that if we want. That's right. But I'm not here for that. Yeah. And right. from what I heard from each of you, and all of you bear witness to this, I don't think that's why these nine city council members have come to these seats. Right. I think we're here, thank you. I think we're here because we're the group that's prepared to tackle this challenge. Amen. We're going to disagree.